Hi everybody, I am Dr. William Pelley, and this is uh, the joint hypothesis problem. Uh, so the joint hypothesis problem refers to the fact that testing for market efficiency is problematic and potentially impossible because it replies on it relies on asset pricing models. And if you haven't already watched our, uh, my CAPM video, I strongly recommend that you do. Um, CAPM is one asset pricing model. By asset pricing model, basically what I mean is it's a model that gives you the expected return of an asset and for example a stock testing for market efficiency necessarily involves asset pricing models to generate expected returns that can then be evaluated against real returns so basically what that means is you then look at the real returns of an asset for example a stock like like a, a coke for example um the you know coca-cola and then you can compare the real returns of the company Coca-Cola against the expected returns of the company Coca-Cola. Um, and it is one of the things is it's not possible to measure abnormal returns without expected returns predicted by pricing models. Um, anomalous returns may either reflect market inefficiency in inaccurate pricing model or both. And so, the joint hypothesis problem suggests that the efficient market hypothesis is not testable. So basically what we're trying to get at here is the following. On the one hand, we have the efficient market hypothesis. On the other hand, we have these asset pricing models. And so what we would like to do is we'd like to say, we'd want to test the efficient market hypothesis and be like, is the market efficient? But in order to do that, we have to have a reliable asset pricing model, right? But the problem is if we then, don't have a reliable asset pricing model, we can't know if the market's efficient. But the problem is we don't know if our asset pricing models are correct. Like we don't know, for example, if the cap M is right. Does the cap M, for example, produce expected returns that are correct? Right? Are those expected returns actually what Coca-Cola should be earning every year? Um and so because our because we literally don't know the answer to that question, then if Coke produces returns that are meaningfully different from what the CAPM tells us Coke should be earning, we don't know then if CAPM is wrong, like CAPM is giving us the wrong expected return, or if the efficient market is wrong, and it's like uh, that maybe then the market's just not efficient. Um, and so that is the joint hypothesis problem. And so just so you know, this is as presented in this book, Alphanomics by Eric So at MIT, who was one of my advisors at MIT. Um, and this is the test of the no free lunch hypothesis, which um, you quickly run into a serious challenge. Um, and when they talk about no free lunch, what they're saying is you basically can't generate uh, abnormal returns. Right. And so um, the capital asset pricing model states that the expected return on any security is proportional to the risk of that security as measured by its sensitivity to market returns, referred to as beta, and nothing else should matter. Suppose we find evidence against the predictive power of beta for cross sectional returns. So one possibility is the EMH holds, but Cap M is a poor model of how investors set prices. Perhaps prices do reflect all information, but there are other risk factors besides market returns that investors are being compensated for bearing. Another possibility is that CAPM is, in fact, how investors should set prices, but they're failing at it because of some sort of behavioral error or bias. Yet a third possibility is that the EMH and CAPM are both wrong, and it is difficult to sort out where the problem lies. Um, and so this is the issue, is we don't know if CAPM is wrong, we don't know if EMH is wrong, or if they're both wrong. Um, the efficient market hypothesis review, just in case you didn't watch the, a video on efficient market hypothesis, is there are three forms. The uh, strong form, which is all public and private information is reflected in the price. Semi-strong form is all publicly available information is reflected in the price. Mm -hmm. And the weak form is uh, only historical prices are and returns are reflected in the price. Right, so this weak form here is all historical prices and returns. Semi-strong form is all publicly available information. 
and strong form is all information, public and private. Typically, it is acknowledged in the literature that the weak form likely does hold, right? And the reason for this is there are really no limits to arbitrage for this, right? Everyone does have this data and processing it is relatively easy. That is relatively costless. Um, so therefore, there are no real limits to arbitrage that prevent arbitragers from, you know, factoring this price into prices, this information into prices. However, semi-strong form does not hold, does not fully hold. And the reason is all publicly in available information, there are costs to factoring in all public information. There's cost to collecting it, and then there's cost to processing it. And the, those two costs prevent it from being fully factored in at any given time. And so therefore the market is not fully efficient because the costs prevent it from being fully baked into prices. And then the last form, strong form, all information public and private, again, we have this limit to arbitrage, which is that we've got federal securities laws and insider trading laws, which prevent all information, including inside information from making its way into prices. So to wrap up, um, the joint hypothesis problem is we it's very difficult to test the EMH because we don't have a rock solid asset pricing model that can tell us what a fit, what asset what expected returns should be. And without a rock solid uh, model of what expected returns should be, then when we when we see what prices or what returns actually are, we don't know if those returns are we don't know like how those how those compare to what the expected return should have been because we don't know if the expected return model is wrong or if the efficient market hypothesis is wrong or if both are wrong and that anyway that's the joint hypothesis problem thanks so much for listening and i'll see you guys in the next video